Hi, this is Steve Gimperly with Magnet Forensics, and today I'd like to talk about the handling of privileged materials within the Axiom software program. We've added two features into Axiom process to support users dealing with privileged materials. This option allows users to either tag or exclude artifact evidence from case data based on a keyword list that the user imports. So some of the use cases. From a corporate standpoint, you can look at e-discovery or tainted materials where you may not have that ability to look at all the material or want to look at all the material from a given data set. And on the law enforcement side, you have tainted material reviews where you're not allowed to look at all the material, or you may be limited by a consensual search or limited on a search warrant for the certain items that you may be able to look for. And these are just a few examples. There are many, many others that are out there. Let's take a look at privileged content within Axiom Process. So when you open Axiom Process and you start a case, you can give it a case number, give it a name. When we go to evidence source, you're going to add in your evidence source. In this case, I've added in a small evidence Within process, down here, you'll see parse and carve artifacts, the date range filter, and privileged content. Let's quickly look at date range filter. Within the date range filter, you can come in and select a specific date range you want to search the material for. So if you're only looking for material over a certain amount of time, or you're limited legally by what you're allowed to look at, you can set in that date range here. But mostly, let's look at privileged content. Privileged content and this edition allows you to identify or remove privileged content in the case. So if you'd like to exclude privileged content from a case, this will not include any matching results. However, the data for the case, for example, some of those databases may remain in that case, and they may be available through the File System Explorer just so you know that it doesn't completely wipe it out. But if you're looking for emails, it won't show those base emails based on an email address. In order to exclude information, what you need to do is you need to add in a privileged content list. And this is just a simple text file that has all the emails generated or all the data generated that you want either excluded or included in this case. In this case, I just made a privileged content keyword list. I'm going to enable that here, and I put in 10 randomly generated emails. These are not real emails, just randomly generated for illustration purposes. So we can see here is the key li keyword list of the emails and the number of records, and then you would just go and hit go to analyze evidence and begin to analyze your evidence. Now, if you decide you want to tag the privileged content for review, you can click on tag. And again, once you click enable, it adds all those keywords in, and it also gives you the ability to create that specific tag. We have it pre-populated as privileged content. Each of these emails, when found in the data set, will be automatically tagged with the words privileged content next to it. With that, you hit go to analyze evidence, and it will analyze that evidence. Here we've processed this case. And within this case, once we go to our artifacts and we scroll up to the top, we can see that certain accounts have already been tagged with privileged content. These items were from the search list. So the email addresses scott at inatech.1 and danny at inatech.1 were marked in that privileged content text file that we had added in during our initial processing. Now that these are in, we can move to our email system, and you can see the emails between these two individuals. Now, in this case, there was a possibility that one individual sent an email to the other individual of material that he shouldn't have sent. And here we see that Danny had sent Scott a file, and when we click on the contents of that file, we see that he actually had sent him a file containing 
names, email addresses, credit card numbers, and social security numbers, which may be relevant in the case that you may be investigating. With that, I hope you've enjoyed our quick preview of privileged content. Thank you for watching.